Here we're looking at an N1602 alternator. Big mama jama. Size of my hand right there. Damn, that's a big joker. 400 amp alternator. Man, I tell you what, that's a big joker there. Coming with a N3118 uh, regulator. Never, never rebuilt one of these. It's got the wires coming out the back end back here instead of one on the front like the uh, smaller version here. Like here, you got one wire coming out of the alternator and for the stator over here for the regulator. Okay, so I'm not seeing which one's which. Or, anyway, it's got some kind of noise internally, so. I'm gonna pull this shroud off and eliminate that. It looks like it's rubbing right here. It looks like it's rubbing on the shroud. Yeah. So let me pull the shroud off and see what see if it still rubs. Okay, I got <coughs> okay, I got the back cover off. Or the the fan off. It looks like uh nice little, it looks like a type of compression seal right here. Pops on there. Uh, Hitting that plate. So, something. <laughs> so, something is causing the fan to recess in too far. So, let's take a look at our bearing here. So, yeah, if you can see the little marks line right there as it goes around looks like our bearing might have pushed in or the shaft yeah everything went that way just a little bit maybe about a looks like a big almost a quarter of an inch yeah. i'll take the screws out here and see what happens all right, all right i got the plate off we see where it rubbed up against the plate. The fan the fan rubbed up against his plate. It kind of helps keep the heat in. It's like almost really like literally on it. Just like that. I guess I couldn't make this together like that. So pretty cool for work. Now we'll take a look inside of here. Yeah, that's pretty. Look at that diode trio assembly. Yeah. Wow. wow. This is going to be interesting. Looks easier than the other ones where the wires come up. Doesn't look as bad. It looks easier to work with. I can spin the shaft pretty easy. So it's, don't hear anything. Then the shaft turns easy in both directions. So maybe all they heard was the fan hitting the plate. But there's a reason why that's doing that. We just gotta figure out what the reason is. Well, you know what? Looking at this a little closer here. Okay. All right, looking at Oh, now you can see it a lot better. See how the, the bearing probably sat right here where it's not shiny? And and now... Focus that in. You can see how the bearing has moved in a, a good quarter inch. You can see a line all the way around the around the race. Okay, I got my my gap to decrease by uh, using a dead blow hammer and pounding pretty hard on the on the shaft on the armature and uh, trying to knock it back through the bearings and. Uh, it was at uh, 
about three sixteenths and uh, got it down to about uh, 30 seconds. I'm gonna bolt everything back up and see if it hits the shrub. Okay, this is that N1602 400 amp alternator and um, never hooked one up before so the thing you have to do is you have to take from this positive because it's got two positives on it here and here and it's got two grounds so we got to make a ground cable to jump across to the front ground and a positive cable jump over here all right, I got the wires jumped. Positive, positive, negative, negative. Positive coming off my 24 volt power supply and my load negative right here. And probably hook up the 14 volt to the regulator. So I got the 12 volt, 14 volt cable hooked up to the old regulator. Yeah, this whole alternator is completely damn. It's self, still self-rectifying, and uh, the wiring, the windings in it are, are current transmitting, so all the components are non-moving. So there are no brushes or slip rings or to wear out. So pretty nice little alternator. Neohoff makes a good gen generator alternator, and the regulator, even though it's a different, different style, different model, it still has the same principle as the other style, as the. And 3135. This one here is a N3118. The uh, switch from the uh, vehicle energizes and activates the regulator. I mean, that's how the fuel cool gets to see. Output, voltage output tap, the ignition in, and the regulator's equipped with the over voltage cutout. Uh, it will, this will trip the uh, electrical system if the voltage gets above 32 volts and it's longer than three seconds. That, that way the OVCO detects high voltage and reacts by sending a relay in the field control circuit, <coughs> which is internally inside back in here, and that turns off the alternator. If you was in a vehicle, you'd have to restart the vehicle in order to reset the OVCO circuit. This regulator, it, it's designed to monitor alternator rotation and also provides current only when it detects alternator shaft rotation. So, so at a certain speed, the thing's spinning, it, it can only detect. It senses rotation and signals the regulator. So after it, uh, after the regulator detects alternator rotation, it gradually applies field current. This just keeps preventing a mechanical load as unnecessary drive system that's on the truck. Pretty neat little system. Uh, the soft start may they also take up to 10 seconds at full electrical load. I like the soft start, kind of like you apply eight or nine volts, up to maybe up to 12, and gradually the system starts charging. Yeah, this also this voltage. Regulator is uh, it's temperature compensated, so it's got set points of 28 volts uh, plus or minus two, and on the 14 volts it's plus or minus two. So we're looking at probably about 75 degrees. That's where the compensation is. So uh, it depends on this is set by the military. So I guess customers can select you know, per application, but, but these are these are military specs, so. Get what you pay for. So you notice on my, uh, I have my terminals, my B plus terminals here and here, jumped. All right. You want you want to to run this alternator. You have to uh, both positive terminals uh, must be connected together. <laughs> both battery positive potentials. So I just used a uh, interconnect cable and uh, jumped it. Also did that with the ground, so also the ground has to be connected uh, to common ground. So using that, uh, using an internet cable here also. Okay, looks like we're ready to uh, operate our machine and uh, 
observe some voltage at our gauges and see if we're, we're charging. Let's power up the machine. So as with most, most of the other regulators, the, you have your ignition and your AC tap, so, or UUT, or unit under test, wire snaps right on the, clips right onto that ignition terminal. And that's why we'll say our field.
steam just cut off. What the hell happened? Oh, crap. Inverter fault. Well, the machine shut off. And on my panel here, I have a uh, my drive motor inverter fault. Not high temperature, but inverter fault. So, what it did is shut everything down. And it shut it down smoothly. I was surprised it just didn't abruptly just shut off. It was a smooth descent. So maybe no damage was done. Uh, it's not a heat problem. Oh, the belt is probably the... Yeah, you can touch it. This thing is super cool. I mean, it's, it's hot, right? Let's see. It's warm back here on the diodes. Uh, I think the, the pulley was the hottest thing. It was like 110 degrees, so it was... I got three. I had to put three belts on it. Yesterday I had two belts on it, and it squealed like a pig. But I ended up putting three belts on it today. And cables are warm. I mean, cool. 